Hey, hey, everyone, and welcome to episode 83 of the Computer Business Marketing Show. Today's episode is brought to you by Tech Blog Builder. Tech Blog Builder is the blog writing service for IT businesses. We craft content that converts website visitors into customers with 100% unique, SEO-ready, professionally written blog posts delivered on a consistent schedule written for your business's personality. We also will post it to your website, to your social media accounts, and create engaging videos around your blog content. Learn about all of that at techblogbuilder.com. On today's episode, we talk with Lee Rowley about personal branding. This guy not only talks the talk, but he walks the walk. And he's going to show us how he broke through his shyness and fear to build his own personal brand. We'll also talk about why it's important to infuse your personality into your business, how, how it can help you grow your business, and what you can do to get started. All that and so much more coming up right now. Hey, hey, everyone, and welcome to the Computer Business Marketing Show. If you own or work in an IT services business, this is the place to learn how to get more clients, keep them happy, and grow your revenue. You can watch, download, and or subscribe to all show episodes at computerbusinessmarketing.com. You can also catch our live stream on Facebook every Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern. Just be sure to like the Tech Site Builder Facebook page, click the following tab, and then select see first so that the live stream will jump to the top of your news feed. All right, well, uh, our topic today is gonna be all about personal branding. How can you brand yourself as well as your business uh, to improve your marketing and increase your sales and why that's beneficial, how to do it, all of that good stuff. Before we jump into that though, um, just wanted to remind you guys about the Computer Business Marketing Newsletter. That is uh, the newsletter you can subscribe to. Every week you'll get an email with the latest uh, trending news around marketing that's specifically curated for you guys, IT business owners, MSPs, computer repair shop owners, consultants. Uh, you guys, uh, this is the news that you need and able to grow your business. Um, every uh, edition has the latest podcast episode as well as a curated um, list of posts from around the internet as well as the uh, latest Facebook posts from the Facebook group. Um, and those are always cool because it's real IT business owners asking questions, getting answers, asking for advice, getting advice. Um, so those are always really fun to check out. And then every uh, newsletter we end with the tip of the week where you can get a nice little uh, thoughtful tidbit or a uh, piece of inspiration to inspire you in your marketing journey. You can find all of that at computerbusinessmarketing.com. Just head over to that website, fill out the form, and uh, you will be subscribed to that free, spam-free newsletter. Um, all right, guys. Well, this is the, uh, the, the next episode after the holidays. So we've had, you know, Christmas and uh, Hanukkah and, you know, all the different holidays that you might... Uh, have celebrated and now we're kind of winding down from all of that and and you know have the holiday hangover <laughs> as it were I know a lot of you guys are might be taking some extra time off between now and New Year's and that's great I definitely uh, it, encourage you to do that if you can um, I know personally my my um, workload is a little lighter this time of year so even though I don't have a lot of client work to do I still like to um, work on you know strategy and planning and maybe catching up on like you know business work, like working in the business and, and strategic stuff that I had maybe put off for a lot of the year. This is a nice quiet time to kind of catch up on all of that stuff and then prepare for the next year. So I uh, would love to hear from you guys what um, plans you have for 2019, what kind of goals you're setting. I think uh, Paco and I will probably talk about our 2019 goals in the next podcast episode. So um, we can, you know, just kind of review what we're going to be working on this year um, in our businesses and uh, and then we'd love to uh, maybe give you guys some advice and hear what you guys have planned for the new year as well because uh, again you know the new year is a great time to just revisit your business think about where you want it to head and uh, and then take a look at the previous year and see you know did you meet your goals I can tell you I 
my business kind of changed shape this year. So a lot of the goals I made at the beginning of the year are I, I either didn't stick to or totally irrelevant now because of, of some of the shifting I've done in my business. And that's okay, right? You, you, the goals have to be flexible. Um, and so I've, you know, I added the new service tech blog builder to, uh, to my portfolio of services that I provide. And uh, that's something I didn't, didn't think to do until after the new year. So I, I created this new service, uh, new website, new infrastructure, new processes, everything around that. That took a lot of my time, so I had to refocus. Um, I wanted to do some other things like uh, rebuild the Tech Site Builder website. I didn't get a chance to do that, so that's pushed to, to this year. So I did some reshuffling of my own goals, um, uh, but you know, still kept moving forward, kept uh, trying to increase um, my, uh, my business. And I can tell you definitely 2018 was my best year yet. Um, I, uh, definitely exceeded, uh, the revenue goal that I had created at the beginning of the year. So that's good. So even though some of my business goals and the things I wanted to get done, didn't get done, I was still able to grow my business and still able to get more customers. And, uh, and so that was great. And I guess at the end of the day, that's all that really matters, uh, you know, is, um, growing the business and, uh, and doing that. So it's been good. Uh, so maybe next episode, uh, Paco could talk about his goals and, and then what we have planned for next year. All right, guys, uh, before I jump into the interview, I did want to talk about uh, one of our sponsors. And that is, uh, let's see, what is, what is our sponsor today? It's Tech Blog Builder. And I just mentioned that, right? Uh, Tech Blog Builder is a service I created at the beginning of the year last year. Uh, the purpose of this service, well, the reason I created Tech Blog Builder was, um, you know, as I was creating websites for customers, especially you guys in the IT services business, um, something I saw that you struggled with was creating uh, blog content on a consistent basis. And we've talked about that throughout this podcast, how important it is to continue to generate content for your business, to put stuff out there, help establish you as an authority, help help retain the clients you have by continuing to give them uh, useful information. Um, so it's great for marketing, it's great for client retention, and it's just great to build up your SEO and your brand awareness. So we know it's important, but it takes time. And a lot of you guys just aren't, you know, uh, just don't have the time or, you know, you wouldn't consider yourself a writer. Uh, so I decided to throw together this service to help you guys create consistent blog content for your computer businesses. So what we do is we get to know your business, we get to know you, um, then you can suggest what you want us to write about. We send it to our writers who craft uh, an SEO ready blog post that uh, is built to convert people who read it into customers. So every tech, blo tech blog builder post that we write takes the reader on a journey through um, education, through um, getting to know you and your business, and then finally gives them a call to action at the end to contact you. Um, so we make sure to uh, make it engaging. We make sure to uh, have links in there so people can click around to other pages on your website. And, uh, and it's something that, you, that will last forever in your business, right? You post it up on your website and it lasts forever. So with Tech Blog Builder, we write the article, we post it to your website, and then optionally, if you choose one of our higher tiers, we'll also post it to social media for you, and we'll create a video around it. Um, the people who have ordered the video service have been loving it so far. Um, they, they think it's great. So uh, I highly recommend you look into that if, uh, if that's something you'd like. And uh, we package that all up into an affordable monthly cost. So uh, it's predictable um, and you can just build that into your marketing budget and it's a, it's a no brainer. So definitely check out Tech Blog Builder at techblogbuilder.com. Um, let's see, I'm, I'm looking in the Facebook chat and Brian says over the holidays he had one emergency job. Um, it, he didn't plan to go back to work until January but uh, finally found time to listen to an audio book. I wanted to find the time to listen to for a long time, did some marketing and got some repairs done. So good. So you're, it's productive, but not too busy. Kind of like me, right? It's a kind of a slow period where you can work on your business a little bit. Um, and uh, great. Uh, yeah, Greg says business has been dead the last week as usual. Yep. So that seems to be a common thing, right? A lot of people are taking this time off, so they're not contacting you either. So now's a great time to work on your business. Um, cool. 
All right, guys, so uh, let's jump into the featured topic for today. So today we're going to talk about personal branding with Lee Rowley. He is the uh, founder of Sales Copy Academy, and uh, you can find out more about him at leerowley.com, L-E-E-R-O-W-L-E-Y. Welcome to the show, Lee. How are you doing? I'm doing fantastic, Matthew. How about yourself? I'm doing great. Can't complain. Like I said, you know, it's been a good year and uh, I'm able to take a little bit of time off uh, to, to focus on next year. How is, how is your holiday season? Well, that's fantastic. Uh, well, for me, it's uh, people who are trying to get the last minute uh, new year, new you projects in. Uh, uh, so I work with a lot of coaches. So uh, they're wanting to get those, you know, be your best thing in the new year or whatever. Uh, and of gotcha. course, they're waiting, waiting until the end of December and going, oh my gosh, I have to have this <laughs> in four days. So, of course. Uh, my, my holidays are maybe not as calm as yours, but that's okay. Right. Well, my yeah. time's coming. January, I can breathe. Right. There you go. Yeah. yeah. And I, I had a really busy, busy dis, early December because a lot of my clients were trying to spend their budget for the year and get a bunch ah. of stuff done, you know, before the holidays. So gotcha. that's always busy. Yep. Great. So um, before we kind of dig into personal branding and, and how that can help the folks listening to this episode, why don't you um, tell us a little bit about yourself, who you are, how you got started and what brought you to uh, where you are today? Oh, well, fantastic. Um, well, believe it or not, I did not grow up as a youngster in rural Ohio in the 1980s, thinking to myself, I want to be a copywriter when I grow up. <laughs> right. I just, it was just, I wanted to be, look, I was like, I wanted to be a professional wrestler, man. It was like Macho Man Randy Savage and Hulk Hogan. And I grew up watching these guys and I was like, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Genetics just didn't comply. So, uh, you know, I took a detour through, uh, uh, I became a compliance manager for an insurance company, which is just as exciting as it sounds. <laughs> believe me. Uh, you know, the policy books that you get with your car insurance that you never read. Mm. I actually used to write those things. Yeah. Wow. That, That's, that is riveting stuff there. <laughs> so yeah, you know, after, after about a decade of that, I'm just like, I cannot take any more of this corporate life. I just can't do this. I can't do the cubicle thing anymore. Uh, so I, I learned how to write copy and I learned pretty much the same way that most people in that industry learn is that they tell you to, to use templates to hand copy sales letters that were written 30 years ago, back when people actually had time to read the things, you know, mm. uh, they would, they would basically, they teach you to, to, to write marketing copy to market yourself the exact same way as everybody else to the point where there are even, there, there are people who just sell copy templates, you know, and it's just, you just fill in the blanks and this is just, you know, wasn't much different from that. And then just like, okay, well, this is just what you do. Uh, by about year six of that, I realized a few things. One, I wasn't happy. Two, I wasn't being the best I, I could be for my clients. And three, I wasn't making nearly enough money. So I, I really just had to go back and, and reinvent. And part of that was branding myself, mm. getting out from behind the keyboard you know, stop the, the, the process of just being an anonymous figure who, who ghostwrites this fantastic copy that's making you millions of dollars. I mean, I'm talking about, I'm writing for people like Russell Brunson here. So, yeah. you know, the, these people are, are making some, some good sales with this copy. And yet here I am, I can't charge more. I can't do more. I can't be more because I'm scared because I'm behind this keyboard and I'm so used to being in this comfort zone, this safety zone that I can't, I can't build the business the way I want to. Right. So, yeah. So yeah, that makes sense. And I think uh, a lot of folks listening can relate to that where, um, you know, you feel stuck in your business, it's not growing and you think maybe what might help is to get out in front of your business and, and, you know, become the face of it, but mm -hmm. um, are, are, are scared or intimidated by it. Um, so it sounds like you kind of went through that journey too. What were some of the first things you did to, you know, break out of your shell or, you know, have the confidence to, to start be branding yourself as the business? Part of it was just a process of getting back to, to being who I was. Uh, and I think maybe some people here can relate to that. I wasn't exactly the most popular 
kid in the world, you know, growing up, uh, because I was interested in other things, more complex things, you know, and, and so that got me shoved in a fair number of lockers and in trash cans and <laughs> other, other things. Yeah. But I, 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 so I spent a lot of years trying to fight being who I was because I'm just, I'm kind of weird and quirky and mouthy and, you know, some, okay. some different things that aren't exactly palatable uh, to the general public. But I finally said, okay, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to just have to do this being me. Maybe not all of me, but, but the facets of, of who I authentically am that resonate with the people that I serve. Right. You know, that was a big thing for, for me was just coming back to that point of just telling, like, just being able to say, yeah, I can, there's nothing wrong with who I am. I don't, I cannot, I can't please everybody. I don't want to please everybody. So that gets into defining who your audience is, who you want to serve, and more, just as importantly, who you don't want to serve. You know, I mean, finding out who you don't want to serve makes a huge difference in your business because you can just say, you know what, they can have their opinions. It doesn't matter. And I think um, personal branding actually helps with that, right? Because mm. if you're going to be the person that's interacting with the customers and throwing yourself out there, you want to you wanna feel like you're communicating with the people that you get along with best and that you can relate to. And, you know, you can kind of hide behind your company and, and not see that. But once you're out there in front, you kind of are forced to seek out the people that you connect best with. Mm -hmm. And in turn, those people are able to see the real you and connect better with you. So I think sometimes, it, especially if you're, in, if you're in a business where you're struggling to find your ideal client, just starting to put yourself out there and create a personal brand will help you find those people because they can't help but find you because there you are in all your glory. And uh, they're going to be able to, you know, the people who relate well to you will relate to you, the people who wouldn't, wouldn't be a good customer because you don't communicate, have the same communication style or whatever. They'll see that in your videos or in your podcast or whatever, and then mm -hmm. they, they won't reach out to you. And so I think it's a natural filter almost um, for those ideal clients that are out there. It really is. And it's such a weight off your shoulders not to try to please everybody. Because no matter what you do, somebody's going to tell you you're doing it wrong. That's just how it is. Right. And that and that's fine, uh, you know. But I I say to I, knowing who you serve and knowing their lives intimately. I actually do a lot of research on my clients and the people that they serve because I want to know what's really going on in their lives and find out. I I always say that the intersection the the magic happens at the intersection of your story and their story. And what I mean by that is when you find the part of your story about who you are and you find where it can intersect and connect with their story, what they're going through, then there's no reason for them to ever want to work with anybody else. Oh, that's perfect. I love that. And, and I can see that, you know, uh, like with IT guys who are trying to, to relate to their customers, they can find, you know, things maybe outside of IT, because I know we like to be in our IT bubble and talk about tech and stuff, but you sure. can find things like maybe hobbies or where you grew up or, you know, what school you went to or something like that where you can connect on a, on a personal level with your, your potential customers and have that kind of shared thing in common where, like you said, there's that intersection. And then mm -hmm. from there, you can build, you know, a professional relationship. Um, and I, I think that's really great and something worth seeking out. It really is. It, it's all about paying attention. Yeah. Um, you know, we, honestly, I'll, I'll uh, subscribe to several Facebook groups where my target, my, my ideal audience or my client's ideal audience where they're hanging out because you, then you can just, you can listen, you can find out where those intersections are very right. easily because they don't think that marketers are listening. They're not guarding. They're not giving what I call gated feedback. It's like if you go to your, if you, if you go to your customer and say, what do you want? They're going to give you gated feedback. They're going to tell you what they think you want to hear. Hmm. because they want to seem, they don't want to seem dumb. They don't want to seem uninformed. You know, it's just, there's just different things that cause those, those gates to gap up and give you an answer that's maybe not exactly what you're looking for. So that's why I love to do the Facebook groups is you can find out what they're really thinking. <laughs> right, exactly. Kind of lurk in the background and, and hear, <laughs> hear what they're hey, actually talking about. Hey, you do talking. what you got to do. Yep. Um, let's see, Greg in the chat says, I'm all about being relevant to the everyday end user, and I try to speak on their level. 
And that, that's something great to keep in mind too, is, is as you're, you know, developing your personal brand and, and talking to your ideal customer is you're speaking their language. So we might be the experts at IT and know all mm -hmm. the technical jargon, but we're not necessarily going to be able to relate to someone by talking tech and, and getting deep in the weeds. Um, instead, we need to understand how our ideal customer talks and, and understands and then talk to them like that. So I think that's a good reminder. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I say there's three things. I have a three prong test for whether I've got the right voice. And for me, that's the car test, consistency, accessibility, which is what you're talking about, hmm. and relevance. So, you know, keep your voice consistent, always be the same across all channels. You know, you want them to know it's you. You know, the right. accessibility is exactly what you're talking about. You maybe, maybe just one notch higher than, than what your, your ideal client speaks. You know, right. you want to be a little, you want to show you a little bit higher to show you're educated, but not the ivory tower stuff that, that the, right. we think we need to show to show them to impress them. And then relevance, is it relevant to their problem? Gotcha. You know, so so in, what are some, some examples of, of relevance um, when you're talking to a, a customer? Well, if you're selling somebody a software that you love one feature about it, and that's not the problem that, it's not relevant to the problems that they're they're trying to solve, then it's not going to move them towards saying yes to the solution. Uh, an example that I always use use for my and I as I said I use work with a lot of coaches and some of them kind of get a little on the uh, the woo woo side of things. Um, but I had a, a a client one time that was really upset when I when I gave, delivered her her about me page copy and she said you know, this is terrible, this is awful, this doesn't reflect me. I said, what's the problem? She said, you didn't tell them my favorite color is blue. And I went, who on earth <laughs> gives a rip whether your favorite color is blue? How does that affect whether or not they want to work with you? That doesn't right. work, but that, it's important to me. It's important to me that my favorite color is blue. Oh, okay, yeah, but... Yeah, important to you, but it's not important right. to your customer. Uh, right, and yeah. and and the tech specs sometimes. Uh, you know, I, I see people. You know, somebody's trying to. Uh, I'm a tech idiot, so I I really can't speak this language right. very well. Which is why when I get tech clients, I send them elsewhere. Uh, <laughs> right, but I, I would wait. say you know a, a translation to the to the tech world for that is, and this is something I see a lot in tech site builder, people building websites for their, for their computer business. I'll see them, you know, they say, hey, we do virus removal. We use this antivirus. We use this process. Um, you know, these are the different virus names that we remove. And this, this list of technical stuff that they do uh, mm -hmm. that really, you know, the, the customer isn't going to know what any of that means. They just want to know, hey, you know, maybe I want to hear from testimonials from other customers saying, oh, I can't believe you removed all this gunk that was on my computer. Now it's running better than ever. Um, you know, keep your online credit card uh, bank information safe from hackers. You know, um, don't lose money. You know, talk about the, the pain points that they're going to alleviate by using your antivirus solution. Don't talk about, you know, I'm using AB antivirus and, and BC cleanup tool and, and so forth and so on. They, they don't care what tools you're using. They just want to know what results you're going to give them. And, uh, and that sounds like it probably works perfectly to the relevance that you're talking about. You know, mm -hmm. Talk about how that's going to be relevant to their lives or their business, how that's going to make their business or lives easier. And don't worry about talking about all the different tools you use. Yep. Yep. I was going to, I always talk about 3 a.m. moments, what, what people actually think when they wake up at 3 a.m. and, and they're <laughs> freaked out about something. They're not, th you know, they're not bolting up in bed at 3 a.m. going, oh gosh, I wish I had 512 bit encrypted, da, 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 what? No, they're going, oh crap, does my computer have a virus? You know, am right. I going to be sending, you know, uh, inappropriate pictures to my aunt in Duluth or whatever? <laughs> yeah. I hate it when that happens. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Awkward. great. So, um, so we've got the uh, the relevance and the three a.m. moment now. So, say great. So we we understand the um, the the benefit of personal branding and how we're able to use it to speak to our ideal client, our ideal clients, and uh, and you know have that communication be better. Um, so I'm convinced I want to start doing this. How do I start? What's the first step I do? Is it, you know, do I start a YouTube channel? Do I, 
what, what are some of the things I can do to get myself out there and, and start a personal brand? Getting started is the absolute hardest step. And I can tell you just from the example that uh, even a year ago, the idea of me being on video would have been, ah, no, we're not doing that. <laughs> um, so I, this is not my idea, but this actually worked for me. I actually set up uh, a, a shell Facebook page, like a business page that no followers, no anything. And I just run Facebook lives to it. And I kept doing that until I got comfortable with it. Uh huh. You know, yeah. uh, because, because if you're going to be on video at some point, you're going to be on live video. And that's usually when most people, myself included, would go, yeah. yeah. So that red light comes on and you're toast. Uh, mm -hmm. But just being able to run it and knowing running, no, I'm running it live but I'm running it to a blank page where nobody's ever going to see it. I like that. And, you know, that, that was a huge, huge leap for me. And then once you can do a live video, you could pretty much do anything, right? <laughs> Cause that's the most, you know, the stressful thing is, is what am I going to say? What, what if I screw up? Um, but once you get over that, you can kind of then, you know, do pre-recorded stuff and do, you know, audio and it, it becomes a lot easier. Mm, exactly. Simplifying the tech for me is a huge thing too. Mm. Uh, because the less, the fewer things I have to worry about going wrong, the, the, co the more comfortable I am and the better job I'm going to do. So, you know, for example, right now, I mean, I've, I've, I've got the board and the mixer and the, and the, the Yeti and all that stuff, but I'm running this off of my cell phone with a sure mini shotgun mic and a pair of $8 headphones. <laughs> wow. And it's, I'm pretty sure nothing's going to go wrong. If it does, I'm yeah. darn surprised. Uh, and, and that's why I do that whenever I can. It's just uh, simplifying it for me. just means one less potential problem. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. I like that. It's, it's worth it to kind of get everything set up. And you're right. It doesn't have to be complex. And actually, the mm -hmm. less complex it is, the more reliable it is, right? Because you don't have all these moving parts and different things trying to connect to each other. But getting it right. set up, getting comfortable with how everything works, and, and like you said, running through a cup, uh, you know, a few trial runs of, of things to see and then watching it back, you know, how is the audio? Could, am I understandable? Am I pronouncing, enunciating right? Is the lighting good? And make sure all of that's good. So you feel comfortable with your, your situation and your mm -hmm. platform and everything. And then you can, you know, start um, actually broadcasting and, and not worrying about all that stuff. And, and that's something I ran into when I started doing the Facebook lives is mm -hmm. a lot of times I would have technical difficulties. And these guys who have been watching me for the last couple of years know that at the beginning, you know, I would have audio issues and I would have uh, video issues and, and I'd be sitting here live in Facebook trying to figure this stuff out and getting all free right. and stuff. And then of course I can't concentrate on the content when s stuff like that is going on. So I kind of learned the hard way that you, you want you to make sure your tech is good before you, you start getting into it. And that really helps alleviate some of the stress that could come with that. Exactly. Exactly. Brett says, um, I have trouble separating my personal brand and the business brand. I want to be personal, but also professional. How would you respond to, to Greg's concern there? What is the, what is the concern with personal not being professional? Uh, you know what? Yeah. I, I would say there are, there are multiple aspects of you. You know, there we have, I, I have more than I can count, and I'm sort of sure some psychiatrist somewhere at some point will probably count them all. <laughs> you know, until then, uh, you know, I, I choose what I show. I mean, there are things about me that aren't all that great, like the, when I sleep till noon. You know, I mean, that's like nobody, would, you know, nobody has to see that. Right. Um, that, and that's sometimes what we see um, with some of these YouTube stars and stuff that sometimes they overshare. And mm -hmm. sometimes we see that and we're like, oh, I don't want to, you know, end up giving away, all, you know, everything about my personal life. And li like you said, you don't have to, right? You're, you're, you're putting forward your professional face. So like, for right. example, Greg, you know, when you, Greg, when you go to your customer's house to fix their computer, you're not going there, you know, in pajamas and, and cussing <laughs> up the storm and you know, talking like you would to your best friend. You're going there as a mm -hmm. professional. And so I would approach, you know, your personal brand in the same way, you know, doing your videos. Just pretend like you're talking to a client in their place of business or something like that. 
and and I think you'll be fine. You can still have your personality come through, but you know you're not talking like a sailor unless that's what you do when you meet clients, and in which case you know have at it. Um, but but I think I think what you're you're assuming is that it ha- it's either a personal brand or a business brand, when really you, those things can kind of just be one and the same. It can be you. You're the owner of this business. And, you know, you, you represent this business, but you're also your own person and they don't really have to be separated. I don't think, right. That's, I, I don't think they do at all. Um, I, I, in fact, I've found the, the more vulnerable that I am, uh, the more open I am about just being me and not being who I think people want me to be, the better it goes and, and the more successful I am. One of the, one thing I always say, you know, what you owe, you own it a specific kind of business and you serve a specific kind of client. And there's a why behind that. There's a reason that you chose that out of the entire universe of things. Mm. There's a reason that you chose that. And I think that that's a clue to where that personal and professional branding come together because that why is powerful. And when you can communicate that why, it's a be- it's it's a wonderful thing. It re- it really is because it takes a lot of the sales out of selling. It takes a lot of the work out of loyalty, and it just makes your job that much enjoyable. That that makes perfect sense. I think um, that's you know that's that's a that can be a tough nut to crack at first, but I think once you find that why, then that's something that you can uh, continue to just put out there and you you can't help but feel passionate about it because that's the reason why you started your business. So you can you express that passion to your, to your, um, to your customers. And I think that's a, a win-win. So talking about getting the message out there, what are some of the most effective ways you've seen um, to get, you know, the personal message, the personal brand message out there? You know, people I think can be overwhelmed by all the different channels that are out there. There's, you know, YouTube videos, there's, podcasting, there's blog posts, there's social media, um, and every social media channel has its own native video. And um, so, you know, where, where do people, where can people go to get their personal brand out there? Should they be everywhere? Should they just focus on one thing at a time? What are your thoughts on that? Being everywhere is exhausting. (laughs) Uh, it, It really is. And I don't see a need for it. I mean, where, wherever your people are, Wherever your ideal audience is hanging out, that's where you need to be. And at the, the, I know that's, I'm, I don't mean to skirt the answer, but it's not the same for everybody. Right. Um, you know, I don't, I, I don't know if your target audience is Instagram people. I don't know if they're Facebook people. I don't know if they're still hanging out over on MySpace. MySpace, that even still. <laughs> <laughs> I was around for MySpace people. Yep. Oh, yep. I, 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 was had, I know. It's, it's, it's funny. Like I remember my MySpace page and how much time I put into it, and I thought it was so cool. And oh yeah, uh, uh, if that ever resurfaced, I'd be so embarrassed. Dude, I had a Zanga page. <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah, but anyway, I have gotten this way off track. Then, so. <laughs> um, I, live video right now is is huge. Um, on, but then at the same time you're not getting a whole lot of links uh, on, on Facebook. Uh, if you're keeping your videos like one to three minutes, lives can be super effective. If you're trying to run it for a half hour or an hour, you're going to lose a lot of people. At least that's what I've found with my clients. Um, right. but, but picking one main channel, sticking to it, and just staying in front of people you know, is, you know, and you can adjust your image, your brand as you need to, as you find out what resonates and, and doesn't resonate. Now, what, what are some ways to actually get people to watch? Cause I know a lot of people feel like sometimes they're creating videos and they feel like they're just talking to an empty room. Nobody's watching and, and they have trouble finding visitors. Um, do, do you have any tips or suggestions on how to, you know, spread the word and get people watching your videos? Well, I find that if either of one, you're complimentary of other business owners or you invite them to do a short segment, that's a huge thing because you're, you're giving to them instead of asking. I mean, it, and that encourages shares, that encourages 
follows that encourages growth. Uh, that was really the point when I stopped running so many freaking Facebook ads because nobody was paying attention. They're just like, okay, it's some weird old, old guy in a bow tie yapping about something I don't care about. So keep scrolling. Um, right. but, but when I made the shift to not only connecting with influencers in, in my space and the spaces that I work with, being, you know, coaching and consulting, you know, I found by giving to them, by saying, you know, here's what I can do for you. And here's what I can do for your listeners and your audience. Uh, you know, it, it made a huge difference in being able to get attention back to me because I wasn't just all about the me, 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 me. Here, give, you know, give me. I need to build my business. You see that all the time, right? Yeah, and you know, so something that's worked for me. You know, I'm trying to. I'm putting out content right now that I want right. you know other IT business owners to find and and to relate to and to to follow and and to enjoy. And so, you know, what I do is I go, this is on Facebook. So I go to the Facebook groups where all the IT business owners are hanging out and I share the video feed there. Um, of course, make sure it's okay with the, the group admin. Um, and once they clear it, you know, you can go live to those different groups. I find Facebook groups are a great way to get in front of a group of people that all have the same interests or the same, you know, mm -hmm. um, ideas. And, and then, uh, and then I, I think that's another great thing is, you know, what I do is I interview other people so it's good to bring in, um, you know, partners in other businesses or in other, uh, you know, if you're an IT business owner, you might want to, to, to partner with um, other service businesses in your area. So like lawyers or, um, or accountants um, so that, you know, you can kind of, cause their, their customers will probably end up being your customers too. It's like, it's the same service, professional services kind of all run in the same circles. So you can partner with some, some local professional services businesses and have a podcast or do live videos, interview them, have them interview you. And uh, I think those are all great, great ways to, uh, to, you know, gain a following and start building up a following if you don't have one. Absolutely. Absolutely. And this, this is not mine, but I heard this the other day and I really, really resonated with me that none of us are B to C or B to B but we're H to H, human to human. Actually, our last guest on the Boom. podcast said that same thing. Is that the exact yeah. same thing? Well, like you I said, guys I must have read the same. <laughs> you guys must have read the same blog post or something. But I've, I've been hearing that a lot. I've been hearing that. Okay. A lot. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's that's great. Is is uh, human to human is is where it's at, and I think personal branding is a great way to get you there. Um, so as we, as we wrap up, uh, do you have any just kind of general copywriting tips? Cause I know that's, you know, the world that you come from, um, what's, mm -hmm. you know, what's working as far as, you know, copy on the website and, you know, getting people to, to, to random visitors on the internet to actually like purchase your, your stuff. What, what is some good kind of just, uh, high level copywriting tips that you got for folks? Absolutely. I, I, I am. I hate templates. I hate templated copy. And, and that's something that's so tempting to use because it's easy. You don't have to mess with hiring a copywriter because copywriters are expensive and copywriters are divas and copywriters are pains in the butt, you know, and all the other stuff. But having authenticity is, is we're moving away from this templated, pushy, salesy you know, attitude of, of, we're predators and our customers and clients are the prey and you know, we, we deserve their business. Okay. That's, that's going away. So the authenticity for me, and that has to come up through, through with your copy. That's why I advocate listening like in the Facebook groups or, or YouTube video comments or Amazon reviews or, or wherever you can find real people in your audience talking, you know, that's where you can find out how to relate to them best. You know, it's not through a template. It's not through what some guru tells you you have to say. It's not through a countdown timer or so you know, or, or false scarcity type stuff. Mm -hmm. It's just through being genuine, talking about the benefits of of what you can offer for them and letting them, them know honestly and authentically why you're the right choice. I, I, I think that good copy builds trust and trust builds sales. And so that's, that's, that's where we are. That's the movement that I hope to create. Nice. Um, I, I'm right on board with you. Uh, Greg was asking, or Greg says, maybe lengthwise, more text, less pictures is a good balance. Is there any kind of like, you know, more text or more pictures or does it really matter? 
know, well, we have to keep in mind that everybody's attention span now is at an all time low. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I, I read statistics yes. somewhere of, of how many ads, and I mean, it was well over a thousand that the average people see that many marketing messages a day and mm. the brain just cannot and will not process all of them. Right. You know, so if you're going to get your message across is I, to me, it's as good to do it as succinctly as possible. There are some marketers in the, particularly in the make money online space who are still doing the 4,000, 6,000, 10,000 word sales letters where it's just blah, 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 blah. Get your point across as quickly as possible. Yeah. And, and turn them into clients and customers. And that's, um, that's why I think video is great because you're not serving someone a wall of text. Instead, mm -hmm. your face, you know, talking. And that's something that people can engage with a lot easier, I think, than, you know, a big old long sales page. To, if, it's, if it's kept to a reasonable link, yeah. No, if I see somebody wants me to watch an hour long video, I'm just saying, right. hey, you know, I got things to do. But right. the three to five minutes always ends up being the, the sweet spot for my clients. Very cool. Yeah. Um, and uh, great. So I think uh, that's going to kind of um, be where we end this. Um, I think Brian kind of sums it, sums it up really well in the chat here. He says, uh, there's probably too much content out there now to not be a personal brand. It directs the type of clients you want to have automatically as you are speaking to them directly. It will speed up the process of gaining market share in your ideal niche that you are going after. So that's kind of a, a great summary of what we've been talking about. Um, you know, a personal brand is a way to cut through the noise that's out there. It's a mm -hmm. way to attract your ideal client automatically because you're speaking directly to them. Um, and, uh, and I think uh, that kind of sums it up nicely. So, hey, uh, Lee, it's been great having you on. Um, some great food for thought here. If people wanted to get to know you a little bit better, where can they find out more? Absolutely. Well, uh, if you, really want to know all kinds of stuff that you never knew you wanted to know about me, you can just go to LeeRoley.com. Uh, I also do have a, a, a few coaching uh, spots available for January where I help people write their own copy and I just walk them through the process so that it's in their voice and it, it, it shows their passion. So uh, if that's something you're interested in, you know, that that's LeeRoley.com uh, slash CCC. It's called Collaborative Coaching Copy. And I think your, um, your website is a perfect example of personal branding, right? Because it's your name, first of all, and there's, there's your picture there a few different times, but it's also, you know, very personable and, it, and the copy, the content there is, you know, unique and you could tell it's written in your voice and, you know, there's a Mick copywriter <laughs> there in the middle and, uh, um, you know, some funny stuff there. So I, I think that's a great idea if you guys want to get inspired on how you can kind of, uh, you know, put yourself out there as a uh, personal brand, uh, check out that website and uh, use that for some inspiration. All right, uh, Lee, well, again, thanks for being on here and uh, let's keep in touch, all right? Well, thank you, Matthew, I really appreciate it. All right, guys, well, that's gonna do it for this episode of the Computer Business Marketing Show. Great engagement, guys. Loved uh, the questions you were asking and the comments you were making in the Facebook group. Um, definitely, uh, you know, keep that going. Join us in Facebook. We do this uh, live every Thursday evening at 7 p.m. Eastern. Um, and again, you, all you got to do is like the Tech Site Builder page and uh, make sure you're following us and uh, you'll get notified every time we go live with a new episode. We have lots of great marketing insights like we had in this episode. And uh, we've got a lot of great stuff planned for you in 2019. Um, so we're definitely going to keep this train running and we hope you uh, join us for the ride. So um, if you'd like uh, more inspiration in between the podcasts, then why don't not join us in our Facebook group? That's the Computer Business Marketing Facebook group. Just go to techsitebuilder.com slash group, and that'll take you straight to the Facebook group where you can answer a couple questions. We'll let you in. And there's just a bunch of IT business owners and a few uh, different marketing professionals in there all helping each other out with questions around, uh, uh, around marketing your business. And um, you, know, you ask for advice or you can talk about your wins. Um, and it's a great kind of community there uh, to uh, con converse with like-minded folks. Um, so I'd love to see you there. And uh, otherwise, let's keep the conversation going over at computerbusinessmarketing.com. Head on over there, let us know what you think about this episode in the show notes page. 
uh, in the comments section. I'd uh, love to hear from you. There, we're also going to mention all the links that we mentioned in this episode on that show notes page. And uh, just another reminder, if you listen to this podcast on iTunes or Stitcher, we're running our special through the end of the year. If you leave a review for us on iTunes, um, just let us know. Send us an email saying, hey, I left a review. And then we'll send you a free copy of the book I wrote a few years ago called How to Quit Your Job and Start a Computer Business. So that's a great uh, book to, uh, if you're you know running your business part-time and you want to quit your job and start it full-time, or even if you're running your business full-time and you just want some reminders about you know good practices in your business, uh, that's definitely a great book. And you can get that for free just by leaving us a review, an honest review. It doesn't have to be a good, it doesn't even have to be a good review. Just leave us an honest review on iTunes. I hope it's good, but um, we don't want to, you know, try to pressure you one way or the other. Just leave a re review, let us know what you think, and we'll send you a free copy of the book. Finally, don't forget to check out our sponsor, Tech Blog Builder at techblogbuilder.com. Thanks for checking out this episode of the Computer Business Marketing Show. My name is Matthew Rodella saying, here's to your success. <laughs>